I may never financially recover from this one. All right, folks. So I did a thing. I, uh, I spent my life savings. And what I spent it on, you might ask? This. Is that a turkey? Well, at least we got turkeys here. So behind these gates right here is a hundred, a little over 103 acres that we purchased a few months back and it is finally ours. Um, I've been wanting our own property that we can come out and ride to do our thing, somewhere I can put a little shop on, uh, do all my personal builds, things like that, uh, you know, run the clothing side of things out of here. Um, just our own space where we can just basically do what we on, whatever we want, no rules, just freaking have a good time out here, proving grounds for our rigs. And uh, we are super excited about it, but I'll show you what this place is all about. Now we've been looking for property for a couple years now, and there was a few things that were kind of, the property had to have. One was a creek, which you'll see, this one has. Two, plenty of elevation change, which you can see from behind me. This property's got plenty of that. And three was location. You can't beat this one. This is close to Coleman. Uh, it's on a main highway, nice interest. So freaking perfect. It took us uh, took us a while to find this one. It was on the market for two days. We had to fight with three other people to get it. Um, but we ended up paying a little over asking. But I still think we got a good deal on it. Um, uh, so now hopefully we can uh, get afford it. We actually lucked out. And what made this property so desirable is the timber company that owned it tried to kind of turn it into look like hunting property. So they did a nice gravel driveway and did some food plots and stuff. So the place is really nice and like really has a good head start on, uh, on making it what I want it to be. Now we quickly figured out that this property is going to take some equipment and it's going to take a while to build some trails and stuff. Luckily I got some good friends in that department and uh, my buddy Tim Meeks that owns a brush cutter is actually showing up today and he's going to help me take care of a few trails with uh, his skid steer with his brush monster on it. So uh, stay tuned. That's going to be pretty neat to watch. I totally just watched Tim and them drive by with uh, two trailers of equipment. But yeah, address is new here. Hasn't quite got dialed in with Google Maps. So uh, yeah, it'll either put you a half mile too early or a half mile too late. So uh, I bet the razor out here so he can see where it is when he, so he doesn't miss it this time. The driveway is nice, but it's a little on the steep side. Um, so if you got big equipment, I might have to put her in four wheel drive. He's down there fixing, <laughs> fixing the ruts he just dug. Not a big deal. <laughs> Coming up the driveway. And this big hill section over here that's kind of flat, that's where the shop's gonna be. So just waiting on a little dirt work now. about having property is you don't realize how much work it takes to cut trails to maintain to clean up property and uh, looking for us we got some good friends uh, we got Tim Meeks here with Brush Monster and he's got a pretty sick piece of equipment he actually builds uh, these Brush Monster deals and they will just take down trees like they're nothing like we literally cleared out in this area it took us all day to do this bit of work and clean up this creek bed creek area and he's about to do what we did in probably about five minutes Tim and his guys actually build uh, these brush cutters uh, in Gadsden, Alabama. And, uh, sell them all over the place. Got a bunch of dealers now. Uh, a little better than the, the radial cutter. Uh, they don't dull up as bad. Uh, you can drag that thing across the ground. It's got blades to move around stuff. So easier on the equipment. They don't dull up as easy. So, uh, pretty cool. I, I wish I could afford one. Maybe one day. Once we get all this stuff settled in here. But, uh, Bad at this swimming. I really appreciate him coming out and helping us out with a little bit of, little bit of trail work. That's nuts. 
That's gotta be pretty therapeutic to just ride around and just, just take trees down like that. I need one of those. Maybe let me borrow it sometime. Probably not, maybe. basically sticking with our theme of, of, of using folks in the off-road community. Uh, Tim also owns Rocky Hollow Metal Fab. They've done a lot of uh, chassis for razors, gauges for razors, things like that as well. They even did a giveaway, did a merch line uh, giveaway on a razor buggy that they built. It was pretty cool. I was saying, it literally took us an entire day to clean up around the gate over here, and he's literally done that in all of 10 minutes. And he's all the way over here. Nuts. See what everything along the creek looks like. There's little saplings everywhere growing up, and you can see what he's done in a matter of 15 minutes. Getting all that under like that. So that one spot we cut by hand, we had to bring over here, haul on trailer, bring over here, and burn. And literally everything he's chopping down, he's just mulching up with the brush. stuff here and there, but mostly just mulch. He did this in minutes. It's insane. I think I might just cut trails by hand from here on out. But any of this brush stuff, I'm just gonna call him. It's somebody that has one of those brush monsters. Big thanks to Tim and the Brush Monster crew because without them, this would have took me forever. Can't wait to have those folks back. Hopefully next time we get a little bit of riding in, I'll have some more trails made. But until then, thank you. Y'all check them out. If you're into brush cutters or anything like that, you need kind of equipment like that, that is about the baddest set of machinery I have ever seen for cutting trails and uh, cleaning up property. So check them out, brushmonster.com. All right, so this beautiful little bit of flat land up here on top of the hill is where we're going to put the shop so i'll get into the details of that at a later date but it's gonna be around a 50 by 100 somewhere in there um, shop and uh, we're pretty pumped about it. we're working with someone else in the off-road industry about uh, the design and the building of the shops we're pumped about that we're gonna try to do as much of it ourselves as we can um, but the next big step here is we got folks coming in to do some dirt work for us to get this all leveled out and make this ready to do a building pad, get septic in, all that good stuff. Because if you know anything about raw, owning raw land, that getting utilities and all that stuff in here is very time consuming and expensive. But hopefully we're gonna be able to, to get it accomplished and not be too bad. These are our little perk test holes they've dug to make sure that they have good enough soil and that water is gonna drain. And then I've got to build a 30 foot clearing here to get from a power pole down by the gate all the way up here to the building. So that'll be one of my next projects. That's enough of the building stuff. Let me show you guys some of the trail system and a lot of elevation change. That's one of my favorite things about this piece of property and what drew me to it is that there is a ton of elevation change and also plenty of spot to build a shop. And then hopefully eventually we'll have our forever house up here on top of the hill as well. Just picture a beautiful shop right there. Coming soon, hopefully a few of the trails and green fields and stuff they had. I guess they were setting this place up to look like hunting properties so they could sell it easier. So this is right up from where we're gonna put the shop. Hopefully we'll put a house over here someday. Alright, so that's the main road coming in and going up to where the shop 
stop's gonna be, and this right here is the other trail that they cut. Tim came in here and cleaned up all these uh, little pine saplings right by the road. Made it where we can access the hills a little easier. So I start cutting a few up in there as I see some rocks. They're already looking at me like they want to be climbed. We got some drainage issues that we got to work out here. Um, because they just basically built this road and then didn't put any culverts or anything in for the most part. So they just like creeks and stuff just don't have anywhere to flow. Um, drainage doesn't have anywhere to flow, so we're gonna fix that up. But this is my first trail that we cut. You know, my typical rule of thumb is look for the first ravine that's got rocks in it and cut it. And that's what we did right here. Um, I should have some footage I'll just drop in there. All right, folks, this right here started my first trail. It's a little rocky ravine. I think I'm gonna call it either uphill both ways or U-turn because it goes up the hill and actually connects back down to another trail that we already have cut. So I uh, got the sawzall out with a wood blade. Works just good for a chainsaw, as a chainsaw. And it's really quiet, kids in there sleeping. So we'll cut a few little things, get her started. Should be a good one, hopefully. We'll see what's underneath all the leaves. And that's a little drip and waterfall on here. That ought to get slick when you try and drive up it. All right, here's the start of our first trail. Whew, that's a lot of work. I did all this with a sawzall. There weren't any big trees I needed a chainsaw for, so sawzall's easier, more efficient, safer. So I'll use that. But uh, this is gonna be a good one once we get some tires on it. So. Yeah, look at that. Hey, we made some good progress today. All the way to the very top of the ridge up here. I was about to cut down another ravine, so we're gonna start from the bottom and work our way back up. All right, folks, we got it cleared. This is the other side of the ravine that are all the way up to connect to the other ravine that goes down. First up's Garrett and it's Cherokee. He, if he makes it, he gets to, he gets to name it. Might be called, uh, you say it was, Mongoose. Here we go, trail breaking. That creek 
It's just got nowhere to flow because of the road they built. But we'll take care of that soon. good ones over here not a lot of rock just showing so it won't be anything like crazy hardcore like aop but you should be able to find some pretty decent stuff in here to ride Back up 
up there here to where we want to put the house. I'll run back down to the bottom show you guys the creek and stuff. So we're over here towards the front of the property, the roadside. We got the creek is really nice up here as it flows back into the other one going down the road. So we plan on doing what we can to dam it up a little bit and keep ourselves a good bit of water on this side of it during the summertime if we can. But the terrain here is kind of all over the place. It's got a bunch of shale rock and then over here, this is a straight up bluff. It's like a bounty hill area over here. Lots of big rocks. It's like something we haven't seen really on the rest of the property, even though there's parts of the property I haven't even been on yet. So there's gonna be plenty to find here. It's gonna take a while to build it all. So 100 acres is, doesn't sound like a lot, but it's a lot when you start having to cut trails and stuff. But, uh, but I like this area a lot. Looks good. The rocks just gotta, everything here has grown up so much. It's like they logged it a long time ago. And uh, so there's just stuff everywhere. The little saplings all grown in and can't really get equipment in here very easy. So I had to figure something out, get everything cleaned up. So it's all usable and we can ride around, but we'll spend most of this summer seeing what this place has got, building trails and stuff. So we're pumped about it. The five-year-old over there told me I can cross the log, even though she doesn't see this giant thorn bush. Look at the nice little creek. All right. <clears throat> All right, so it did work. I just had to put some wood on that, make it an actual bridge. Well, there it is, folks. Our little slice of off-road paradise. Well, at least eventually it will be. For now, we have a lot of work ahead of us. Uh, Man, thanks so much for the all the support over the years. We're gonna we're gonna document this entire property development, um, building our dream shop. We're gonna we're gonna do all that. So let us know in the comments if that's, if that's something you're into. Also, we need a nameless place. I'm kind of leaning towards calling it the farm. I don't know what to call it. Um, it's definitely not gonna be an off-road park, so we don't need that anywhere in there. Um, but yeah, let us know what you think in the comments. Um, we're just super pumped to have land to do our whatever we want on, um, to build stuff on, to uh, work on our. Uh, vehicle builds in the shop uh, I, just, I just can't wait it's gonna be awesome so stay tuned a lot more coming down the line oh one more thing if you have anything to do with property clearing or anything with property shop building uh, anything like that and you're in the off-road industry hit us up we want to support you we want to support people in the off-road industry because without people in the off-road industry we wouldn't be able to have any of this so let us know in the comments hit us up and don't get it twisted, I'm not looking for anything for free. I just, if I'm gonna pay someone to do a job, I'd rather it be someone that's in the off-road community that supports the off-road world. That's it.